Okay, welcome back uh, to learnpiezo.org. Uh, today we'll be uh, continuing our series on the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, in the process of doing any practical work, you need to uh, do characterization of your system. Uh, because you're going to have to, for example, design the you know, do the design electronic design the electronics that go around it. Uh, you have to know if your transducer, you know, what frequency your transducer is going to operate at, and, and this, the conditions you'll be applying it, what kind of power it takes, um, and uh, other different uh, features of the performance of your transducer and system you want to characterize. So today, uh, you know, we've been doing that the pr previous couple of times. We measured the impedance. Uh, at resonance, we measured the resonance frequency, we measured uh, the capacitance, those are some important parameters. Uh, however, it would be better if you had an automated way of doing this and automating the picoscope, the USB oscilloscope, is going to allow us to make that piece of equipment much more handy in terms of repetitive measurements and, you know, interfacing that with the programming. Uh, language will allow us to make much more complicated measurements uh, do them uh, in an automated way also perhaps hook it up to a GUI which I'm going to be doing all that using uh, Python um, and uh, in the end have a nice data set which you can perhaps directly make graphs and, and understand the performance so we're going to be uh, programming the picoscope so let me tell you which aspects of the picoscope we're going to be programming uh, which aspects do we want to control so what aspects of the of the uh, USB oscilloscope do we want to control we want to control first uh, the AWG which is the arbitrary wave generator which is just the function generator uh, the next thing we want to control is the range Or you could say it's the scale, basically how many volts per division. So we want the maximum, we want our waveform to fit in the maximum uh, height, or we want to select the best range so we get the most out of the bits used, um, so we can get the best resolution. So you have to change your range. You know, you're not going to use a hundred pound scale to measure maybe a couple grams of powder. You're going to use a, a you know laboratory scale that that's meant for that. So you get better resolution. Uh, with that uh, adjustment of the scale you also need to measure the time base or not to measure but you need to account for that you, you need to measure the time base uh, sorry you need to control and change the time base because your frequency is going to change uh, the uh, optimum time base which is going to be your uh, seconds per division you know milliseconds or uh, per division of you know of the oscilloscope, so you have these divisions across the lateral uh, side. Oh, sorry, horizontal and across the vertical. You're going to have your uh, your range, your volts per division. We're going to need to be doing some measurements, and the measurements we're going to be need to we're going to need to do are voltage, essentially, because we're going to use voltage to measure the current, and we're going to use voltage to measure the voltage and um, what we'll take all of this and we will create a plot. We're going to create a plot of what? Frequency. So, so in the end, what I basically want is a is a is going to be an Excel file, which is going to have a uh, you know one column for frequency, uh, one column for voltage. Let's say, and then one column for current. And we're actually going to measure current from voltage. So we'll just have this, and we'll have the, and we'll also do phase. Uh, I'll explain about that later, but we will then measure, let's say, to one kilohertz, let's say, and we have certain voltage, certain current, certain phase, and we can, you know, divide the voltage and current and get the impedance and all, whatever else you want to measure, um, you'll be able to measure, you'll be able to do it during this program, which will be doing a frequency sweep. So it'll be all very similar to the lectures I did, the whole lecture series I did on the impedance analyzer. If probably you type in learnpiezo.org and then impedance analyzer. We're actually going to make one. It won't be have the same capabilities as your commercial impedance analyzer, but it will have a lot of the same 
It won't have the same performance and accuracy, but it'll have a lot of the same characteristics, which are more than enough for the type of measurements you're going to be doing. And you'll actually know exactly what's under the hood, and you'll you'll be able to um, change that. You'll be able to change your circuit and your system and measure whatever you want. So let's take a look at what how we're going to be um, interacting with this system. So first of all, what you need to do is download Python. This is the programming language which I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm using a Windows computer. I hope you guys are too. Uh, download WinPython. It's basically a um, a Python you know package system where it gives you a lot of a couple different uh, Python tools as well as a Python system. Um, and then I want, I, what you should do from there uh, is then uh, register the distribution. You can look up a lot of other information. You, can, you should register the distribution, uh, which basically means the computer is going to use WinPython's console. So you're basically going to use the Python console of WinPython to be running this whole program. Uh, the next thing you're going to need to do. Uh, you can then this is going to you know once you install it it actually installs into a folder which is not registered like a normal file on a normal program on your computer you're going to look in the WinPython folder that you did and you no, sorry I, I missed this point you're going to actually download Python 2.7 that's the one I'm going to use just because when the whole transition between Python 2 and you know Python 3 was going on some of the packages that I was using for different programs weren't in Python 3 yet probably they all are right now but uh, but actually, I'm still using Python 2. Most of the stuff will just be transferable. Uh, you just have to change some of the syntax. And probably, if you're already familiar with Python 3, uh, you're all gonna, you're you're not gonna really care. You're gonna you're not. And, and I don't recommend just to type in whatever I type in on my screen. You should actually understand. Uh, actually, I should understand how to spell understand. 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 All right. So. So we go in that folder. You open. You're gonna open something called a program called Spider. S P Y D E R. Okay, it's P Y D E R, and that's uh, basically a development environment. It's similar to that. You know that. You know many of us probably use MATLAB. It's similar to what MATLAB is gonna show you in the different features. Uh, but I'll be going through practically how I use it, so you will not be confused, and that's the whole point. The whole reason why I'm going through every step, so you won't be confused, you won't sort of miss uh, important stuff. So you've downloaded that. Assuming you download, if you're not, if you're having trouble, just email me. Um, you know, you can go to my website, learnpiezo.org, right here, and just you know, find my contact information. Email me if you're having any trouble. So we have this spider. Um, so you open that IDE. Assuming you already have PicoScope installed, which I'm assuming you do by this point. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, I already have it, and you're going to left click it, and you're going to do like that. You're going to open, run as administrator. This is actually very important for what we're going to be doing. I want to do this. Yes. So we're going to be opening Py, and, and you also have to open an instance of PicoScope. Although you could sort of do it from the command line, which I'm going to be showing you, um, you also have to download PicoScope. I mean, open. So I open PicoScope, and if you have your uh, if you have your program set up correctly, you should actually uh, already have your you know your scope running. It should already be collecting data. So right now I just have one uh, channel. I'm just sort of adjusting this right now. Uh, I have one channel open. It's not really important what hap what's happening on the screen right now. Uh, it's sort of a side point. <clears throat> right now, I'm going to show you how to. I guess I'll um, I'll decrease this screen too, so you can see as well. Um, I'm basically going to show how to use Python. So I open Spider and I opened it in uh, administrator mode. Uh, you can try all this without it if you want to. I'm not going to force you. But basically, we can use uh, um, Python to communicate with um, the uh, the PicoScope. And now there's a lot of Python packages related to it. There's also like C, uh, digital link libraries. We're not going to do that. We're going to do it the easier way. And I believe in one thing. 
Uh, I believe in many things. Um, I believe that the easier way is often the way you should take first when you're learning. And as we're all learning together, we're going to open the command prompt. Type in CMD in your search, left click that and run it as administrator. Okay, so now I have the C command prompt run as administrator. Type picoscope just to make sure this command works. So when you type picoscope, another instance of picoscope should start up. You want to just exit out of that. Uh, that was just to make sure your uh, your path uh, links are correct. So we're just going to let that open and we're going to exit out. Uh, and and it, obviously you can't connect to more than you know one program to one scope. So now we're going to actually do these. So you can communicate with picoscope, do different commands from the command. So if you do this, picoscope, question mark. Okay. Okay. Picoscope, picoscope, question mark. Okay, I think I'm just doing something wrong there. Okay. So basically the syntax, you write picoscope, and then you write slash A, which means automation. Um, don't have to really worry about that. And write question mark, and you sort of see all the different uh, things which are available to you. Um, I'm going to show you all the ones you're going to need, so don't have to worry about it. So basically, I'm doing this just to demonstrate to you um, how to do this from the command line, so you'll better ha you have a better idea of what exactly you're doing from Python. So if you type in pico dash slash a measurements dot c s v in the cap in question mark. Yes, it's important to spell things correctly. I spelled it wrong. Basically, we're not measuring anything on our on our oscilloscope, which means these, these what the measurements are are these uh um actual measurements. Like I want to measure the AC RMS of this. So the measurements will actually come right here. Um, you obviously can do different things like averaging or whatever. Uh, we're not going to be assuming. You know, it, it'll be a lot more. This is this is a random sign. You know, random signal. Basically, you press that again. And it'll give you basically all of these measurements. Uh, what we're pretty much going to do in our Python program, we're going to take, we're going to send this command to uh, the PicoScope through Python, and it's going to, we're going to take this output, and we're going to find this value. This value is the actual one that we're looking for. The rest are statistical values, maximum, minimum, average, standard deviation. But we want this actual instantaneous value, which you can probably get to become an average or similar to that using other techniques. Um, so we're going to take that value and we're going to store it. And similarly, if we add more, you know, we're measuring on trace A. Now, if we add a trace B, we're going to measure on trace B. And that would be the other way of communicating and getting that information. So right now, what we're going to do, I'm just going to write it out in plain English. If anyone knows Spanish, that's uh, that's cool too. Uh, I don't. So, um, okay, so uh, what we're going to do first, we are going to uh, send a command. to the PicoScope program to what? To get the measurements. And this is the same technique we're going to use to change the other stuff like you can change the scale or change the time base. Or you can you can you can instigate an auto setup. You know that's one of the feature we use. You can make other measurements. You can you can take information from measurements. You can use similar things. And I'm going to show all of it. Uh, not in this lecture, but I will show uh, this lecture is just to how do you communicate with uh, Python. How do you use Python? So we 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 have a new Python program called Test py you import a process called subprocess and remember you open python in uh, you open the spider in uh, administrator mode uh, so open subprocess output which is going to be our uh, file so let me just uh, zoom out or so you basically do this so you import subprocesses the output is this and we can just print output um, 
sub processes check output and you can see the see the see the see the screen you can pause it in order to be able to uh, uh, properly understand uh, what's going on here and copy it to your computer I I think if you are watching this video you should pause it and copy the copy the text yourself you'll understand it a little better so each of the commands in the command line you know every space has to be separated by a comma every command has to be uh, enclosed in and in, uh, in quotes uh, measurement.csv and you simply just run this and look uh, it, it this is the output. so the cool thing about this IDE you know this development so, uh, you know console is that you can actually look at the values uh, of the uh, of the variables which are using and MATLAB is the same uh, so this IDE spider uh, you know this development uh, software it allows you to uh, take a look at those um, these are just parameters which are already in you know already in already loaded into the uh, program because it assumes you're doing something scientific therefore you need to know e and the uh, Euler and the, you know the pi variables but look uh, so we have this as a string so this is a string what we're gonna do in the next video we're gonna we're gonna chop this off we're gonna chop this bottom off we're gonna isolate this value uh, understand how we can convert this micro sign into a uh, into an actual uh, code Um, so it came as this. So we're, we're going to understand how to uh, pretty much get that value and how do you, how do you get this output? And, you know, this is pseudo code. Now we want to get this output, and this is the quotes. Uh, get the output to a you know variable in, in a matrix. You know, it's going to be some matrix. That you're going to have the data, and you're going to have like you know the first will be the you know frequency, and then we'll have the voltage. Of the one and of current and how how do you know and maybe uh, phase and the next one and you do some calculations you find the impedance and wh whatever else you need to do uh, you'll be able to use Python once you get that value so this is the challenge is to getting the value uh, into Python then it's just any any old uh, script to you know process data and print it out it's gonna work so but I'm gonna actually gonna go through everything um, step by step. Uh, for my benefit and your benefit so uh, again what we covered today was first of all why do we need to program and the reason we need to program is because everything is easier and the next reason is the next thing is that how do we do it how do we get values from um, from from peak, from the picoscope into a programming uh, interface, and I explain all of that, and we're gonna go in a little more detail in the coming lectures. Thanks for watching.